Stem cell regenerative medicine, Michael West, Biotime. We talked about stem cells. You've all read a lot about stem cells. How does it apply to aging? Well, one way is taking stem cells and restoring your organs, virtually every organ or maybe even every tissue in your body, or replacing them. And they talked about embryonic, which is controversial, and it has some scientific uh, fallacies. Uh, it just it may not be good, but it, but it, it does develop, sci uh, uh, embryonic do develop into all, uh, all cell types in your body, where adult stem cells don't do that. However, adult stem cells aren't rejected like embryonic may be. So what science is doing now is combining adults with embryonic, at least the effects by taking adult cells from maybe your skin and taking them back in time, reversing them, taking them right back through the stage of development where they look and act like embryonic stem cells with the potential to develop into every one of your tissues, but they're your cells. They're not somebody else's. You're not going to reject them. And then tissue and organ storage. About 36% of the people, Greg Fay talked about this, 21st century medicine, about 36% of the people who die from aging die from organ failure. And you know the long waiting list for lung, for lung transplants, heart transplants, all the organs. You get them transplanted, there's somebody else's there. But what we can do now with stem cell and, uh, research and with, um, with regenerative medicine is to take your own cells and grow your own organs. So you have a bank of organs. If your heart goes bad, you go into the bank and you, and you, take, and you, you have it replaced instead of having replaced with somebody else's heart. The key here, though, is to have the technology that's sophisticated enough to freeze complex organs and keep them on storage, and we're coming a long way toward that. A huge industry, very major industry. Uh, Aubrey de Grey talked about SENS. SENS is a strategy for engineered negligible senescence. In other words, engineering your way to longevity, cleaning up the damage that aging has done rather than trying to figure out this hugely complex bio, bio, uh, biochemistry of each individual and each individual in the, in the human species. It's, very, it's a daunting task to do that. Aubrey has identified only seven causes of aging, and these are the, there's been no, no other confirmed in over 25 years. And he's figured out a way to engineer the, the way around these, in other words, to fix the damage periodically that aging has caused rather than preventing it or slowing it in the first place. This could have some very near-term applications for those of us who are going to be around in 15 or 20 years, and hopefully it's every one of us, and way beyond that. Talked about mitochondrial rejuvenation. Mitochondria are the power plants in your cells. Power plants go down, we all die. There's no, there's no fuel produced. Well, the uh, gene, there are 13 genes in the mitochondria. All the other genes are in the nucleus of the cell where they're well protected. And mitochondria gets damaged, and that's one of the main theories of aging. Because there's not much protection for the genes, and Aubrey's figured out a way to take, or other people have, you know, as well, but he's identified a way to duplicate those genes, move them into the nucleus where they're protected. And uh, this is all real hard science. This is valid stuff. And it's like he says, we don't need to know how the proteins work in order to fix the work. Uh, AGI, artificial general intelligence. Hang on to your seats because imagine if you had a lab assistant, if you're a researcher and you had a lab assistant that was a PhD who never slept, who never forgot a thing, who could learn instantaneously, who could get smarter, make themselves smarter, how valuable would that researcher be and what would they contribute to aging research? Now imagine if you had two of those or 20 or 100 or 1,000 or a million, because when you have something like this, which I'll explain to you in a minute, you can simply duplicate it like you do, like you back up your hard drive. Artificial general intelligence is, is, is artificial intelligence that thinks like a human being and learns like a human being. In other words, it's machine intelligence. And we've come a long way, or at least Peter has. Uh, if you see the yellow uh, printing, 
he's already got a practical AGI engine-based application. Most AI or artificial intelligence is very specific. Uh, it's programmed to land an airplane or to track inventory or any number of things. AGI thinks and acts like, th would think and reason and learn like a human being. Then we need to go through several steps. He's got one right now that's doing some uh, pretty rudimentary but very important work in, uh, in telephone uh, call, and, uh, call services. And uh, it's not just a bunch of recordings and, and, and menus and options. It actually learns as it, as it goes, goes on. Uh, then, of course, the ultimate is getting down to the researcher, duplicating, having a silicon researcher or researchers. Nanomedicine, this is the holy grail for life extension. This would give us the ability to go into our bodies. Nanotechnology is engineering at the molecular level working at the atomic or molecular level, and the ability to repair every single one of our trillions, tens of trillions of cells in our bodies, and pretty much reset the clock. It's an amazing technology, and um, this, like, like I say, if you can repair every cell in the extracellular matrix, you just basically can be any agent you set yourself to be once it gets that sophisticated, plus it gives you the, the ability to augment a lot of the bodily functions or ma basically everything. In other words, we won't be like we were before. We'll be better. And genome re engineering, uh, re-engineering, Robert Bradbury uh, has, has, has always a fascinating and interesting guy looking into the future. Um, we understand now that, that as I said, uh, biotechnology is becoming information technology. Every single gene in our body is basically a computer program. We have about 23,000 genes in every cell. So everyone's a computer. Bradbury is working on re-engineering those genes, reprogramming them, so we will never get sick, we'll never get old, and um, we can make modifications, again, like nanotech, make it stronger. And these two technologies, by the way, merge uh, quite, quite uh, beautifully. And Robert also talked about pristine stem cells. Now, I was talking about stem cell and the iPS cells where you take somebody's skin and then you revert it back to, uh, how old, you know, back to a, the embryonic stage. Well, you do that, but you're taking already damaged skin or you're taking damaged cells wherever they come from. And even though they're, you take them back to embryonic stages, they're still mutated. They have some problems, inherent problems, because they're old. The... Um, the interesting thing about pristine stem cells is they've, dis they've discovered that all your cells in your body, or cells in your body, I should say, damage with age. And they get damaged by the processes of life, the food we eat, the radiation, everything that, we, uh, that keeps us alive or keeps us happy. And the, uh, they, don't get damaged ran they don't get damaged uniformly, though. They get damaged randomly. And if for, I, use, I like to use the analogy of a, of a soldier going into war, or soldiers going into war. They go into a battle, and a certain number of them are going to be wounded or killed uh, in the first battle. And some of them get wounded multiple times. Other ones escape. They, they, they don't have a scratch. They go into battle after battle, and the more battles they go into, the more, the more soldiers get wounded or killed. But a diminishing number of the lucky few escape without a scratch. And we find that the same thing is happening with our cells. The mutations take place, not uniformly, but randomly. So even at, at our ages, or many of our ages, we have cells in our bodies that may be as pristine as we had when we were very, very young, maybe even infants. And also the pristineness, uh, you only need to have, um, you only need to protect maybe a few hundred or a few thousand, uh, a few thousand genes. So uh, even the damage that takes place to other genes could keep your cells pristine for youth. Um, amazing technology. We use this for cell storage, for organ storage, for organ replacement, organ uh, refurbation.